Hey, everybody. It's good to see you this morning. All right. If we haven't met, my name is Nate. I'm the lead pastor of the Front Church. And uh, if you're brand new this morning, uh, you picked a great Sunday to be here. Because you're actually going to kind of get a flavor of what we're all about. Like, uh, uh, this is our final Sunday here in Summit Academy High School. And after this Sunday, we'll be meeting in Bluffdale City Hall for July and August. And then we're almost ready. We're just ironing out a few details. We're almost ready to announce our next location. But it is not far from here. And so uh, we're excited about that. But um, uh, I thought, like, let's kind of just tell you guys a little bit about how we even got here. And so in, it was the year 2018, and I was doing... Uh, 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 an internship at a church in downtown Salt Lake City. And Robin and I began to sense that God was calling us to plant a church in the Salt Lake Valley. And um, we weren't sure what to do with that. But we just knew, like, Salt Lake needs churches where people can come and explore Jesus' story without fear of judgment. Salt Lake needs churches where people can come and they can belong before they believe. And these were some core convictions of ours. And we just felt like God was calling us to plant a church. And so that was a little crazy, but we got connected to an organization that helped start churches across the country, that has helped start some churches in Utah. And one thing led to another. And in May 2019, we moved into our house just three quarters of a mile that way. And did I feel adequate to start a new non-denominational Christian church? No. No. Uh, if you don't know part of my story, uh, part of my story is I, I started a, a church in uh, Minneapolis, uh, near the University of Minnesota, and I was young when I did it. And, uh, uh, and that church existed for 10 years when I was there and another couple years after I left, and then that church no longer exists anymore. And God did a wonderful, beautiful thing um, during that time, but I just felt like, God, i tried this before. Like, are you sure you got the right guy? Are you sure you want us to do it? But God began to confirm over and over again that this is, in fact, what he wanted us to do. And so our original plan is, Robin and I, we like to like have people over. We like to host events. And so May 2019, we move in our house. Soon, soon after, we're trying to do some things in our neighborhood. It's a little awkward when you meet your neighbors and they say, well, what do you do? And you're like, well, I pastor a church that hasn't started yet. And they give you kind of a funny look, but then you keep going and you begin to talk some more ab about it. And we began to have neighborhood brunches where people would come over and we'd fill our, our, our dining room and living room with people. We began to host worship nights where we'd fit 30 or 40 people in our home for a worship night. We began to do other things around the Christmas season to invite people into our home on Sunday nights to light an advent calendar and to sing Christmas carols. And we just like to gather people. And then in March of 2020, everything changed for you guys too. And uh, I don't know if this happens to you guys, but this last week I was scrolling through pictures just of that like time period, like February and to March and to April and to May, and, the, and I just started to tense up. I started to relive those moments. I started to remember when Rudy Gobert touched all the microphones. I started to remember when I was sitting in a Starbucks finding out the Golden State Warriors were going to play in front of an empty arena, and like, and like anxiety starting to grab, like wrap, wrap its grip around me. I started to experience fear like I'd never experienced before. It started to get... Uh, I started to feel those feelings again. And I remember in March and April 2020, I'm thinking, okay, God, how is this supposed to work? We're supposed to gather people for church or to, to start a church, and now we can't use our living room. Now we can't have people over for brunches. Now we can't, like, how is this supposed to work? And one thing we realized is one of the only ways that was deemed culturally appropriate at the time to gather was for church. 
So we didn't plan on starting church services as soon as we did, but because that was the only thing that wasn't kind of frowned upon in the moment, we started a meeting in our garage. And we'd open the garage door, and we'd spread out chairs as far apart as we could. And on June 26th of 2020, we had eight people in my garage. That counts kids. Eight people in our garage for church in the garage. Then we began to move into our preseason, still having a tiptoe. And we live in a complicated world, and it was complicated times. But in January of 2021... We prayed and fasted as a group of people that was becoming the front church. And God dropped something in our laps that we could have never anticipated. We prayed and fasted in January 2021. And in February 2021, I get a call from a buddy who pastors a church in Oklahoma. His name is Rusty Gunn. I'm not kidding. (laughs) Rusty, if you ever watch this, I love you, man. But Rusty Gunn calls me and is like, hey, Nate. Can your church, and he knew we were a church plant, can your church give away 40,000 pounds of perishable food in two to three hours because I can send a semi-truck to you to get this food to your community, to bless your community? I said, okay, Rusty, when do you need to know by? He said, tomorrow. I said, I will get back to you. And what ended up happening is the government started a program called Farmers to Families. And they started this program because during COVID, the farmer supply chains were cut off. And so the farmers didn't, they were going to just sit on food or sit on product or lose it because the supply chains were cut off. Families were in need, families at jobs, the economy, all that stuff. It was crazy. So the government would purchase food from the farmers that were in a bind. They would would deliver food to communities that needed it, and they they relied on churches and nonprofits to distribute the food. And so we did our first Farmers to Families event where we had to mobilize like 40 volunteers and we were a core team of like 15 people. And so we needed community members and we had community members who from other faith traditions. We had community members who weren't even religious helping us give out food and we did this five times. And, and, and as I was thinking prior to when COVID happened, God, how is this supposed to work? How are we supposed to gather people? How are people even gonna hear about us? How are people gonna hear about us so then they hear about you? We got in front of city councils, We got on every major news outlet. We were on TV, on every TV station in Salt Lake Valley. We blessed thousands of families. We mobilized hundreds of volunteers. And it was like, okay, God, how is this supposed to work? And God's like, hold my beer. (laughs) And then we had our kids camp that summer. 56 kids, kids camp number one. I looked it up. 147 this year. How's that for some growth? And then we made it a grand opening. And this is where you come in, Robin. So come on up. I've got to find where I... There it is. Give it up for my lovely wife, Robin. And just... Here. It's a microphone thing. It's just magnets. Right there. Yep. That'll be good. Does it work? Yep. Oh. You can just sit right there. I didn't know I was coming up first. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did I just tell my story? Yeah. So we, went, we made it to grand opening. Yep. We made it to grand opening. I wrote it. I, I, you know, we were told to fill out our memories. So I wrote it. I submitted it. And then Nate asked me to read it. So I was like, I'm probably going to cry. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it because I will cry. Um, grand, grand opening happened. And that Sunday will forever, in this building, you know, grand opening here, in this building happens and it will be a Sunday that will forever stand out to me um, because on grand opening, I was seeing for the first time how KidFront programming was working. And that's why I'm hardly ever in here. I'm always with the kids. Um, So it's nice to be in here. And so it was seen for the first time how the KidFront programming was unfolding It was exciting. It was working smoothly. We were packed with, like, lots of kids, lots of new faces. Thank you, Amber. Lots of families waiting in line. We had, you know, we have two working Kindles. Of course, on grand opening, only one of them is working. Um, And so there's, like, a literal line to get kids checked in and registered. 
And so once everyone was properly checked in, all of the tours were given, all of the kids were safely in their classrooms. I think I was in nursery. There was a baby that was crying because, of course, babies cry. So I thought, okay, I'm going to go get the mom. And I thought, oh, this will give me a chance to see um, if there's as many adults as there are kids, because there's a ton of kids. And, like, I, I have hardly thought, I wonder, I wonder if there's as many adults. Like, you know, there's, you know, we have four kids. We only had three at the time, but I thought, you know, two adults, three kids. Like, there might not be as many adults as kids today. And so I went to go find this mom, and I walked in around the corner because the, the kids' check-in table used to be farther down the hall. I walk in around the corner, and we used to set up with the stage this way, and I come in through here, and I was blown away because it was packed. Like, packed. I mean, like, not a seat in the house, standing room only packed. And it was stretched as far wall to wall. And then I thought, oh my gosh, how am I going to find this mom? <laughs> but my heart leapt in my chest. I couldn't believe my eyes because it was, we didn't have enough chairs. And I was seriously moved. And I had always known that the front church was God's doing and God's building. But to see it in this tangible expression where people came only solidified that truth all the more. Because me and Nate aren't that cool. <laughs> you know, it's like God is on the move. And so I was completely breathless, completely speechless. Good news, I did find our, the mom. Baby was taken care of. Um, and Bo, our previous um, pastoral intern, saw me just like gaping, just speechless. And at this point, I wasn't crying. When I, but then when I said to Bo, I said, people came. It's full. And he nodded and he smiled, just as Bo does, if you guys remember Bo. And that's when the tears started flowing. And so grand opening was a, a very special day, a very memor memorable day. And, yeah, yeah that's my story. You stay up here, though. Stay up here. We have grandparents, so we can I'm checking take, on take my children. Yeah, I think it's going to be okay. But since grand opening, we say it every week. If you're new, perhaps you're new, maybe you're from another tradition, maybe don't consider yourself particularly religious, we're creating the front for you. And, uh, and we've been collecting stories that tell this reality that we're excited to share with you guys in a few minutes. Since grand opening, we've had people who've never been to church before come to church here for the first time. We have people who have been previously hurt by religious institutions find healing here. Since grand opening, we have had over 70 people say they've, been, they've invited Jesus into their life for the first time on a connect card. So like people say it, they don't just, uh, it's not, they, they're actually telling us that that happened. We have hundreds of visitors. Once it, one, one thing that's important to me is that people know they have a place to return to. Because some people aren't ready to do the week in and week out thing yet. And that's okay. And if that's you, we're glad you're here. But that people know they have a place to return to to explore Jesus' story. And we're going to be here for them. The scripture that comes to my mind is uh, uh, Psalm 127.1. And it says this. This is a, sim a simple line in the songbook of the Bible. Psalm 127, verse 1. Unless the Lord builds the house... The builders labor in vain. But it has certainly felt like it has been the Lord who has been building this house. The Apostle Paul writes in, chapter, in, in Ephesians, a letter to an early church in Ephesus, and he says, In Jesus, you, y'all too, are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his Spirit been so good so can i have my story readers come up coming up if you're a story reader i'm going to back this table up you can just use the mic that's already on you and then uh 
These are just some stories that people have submitted. The number says what order you go in. Kim, can you just get those mics for everybody? Uh, this is me. Oh, I have a mic. This is you too. And then you go. Okay, I'll just kind of stand in the back for a second. I'll come up when it's your turn. So some folks... Some folks did stories, uh, submitted stories anonymously, and some folks submitted stories, and we're going to use their first name if they uh, share their first name. But uh, uh, we're excited to share these stories with you guys. I struggled with my faith after losing a sister, niece, and nephew tragically. I always knew I wanted the kids to be raised in church, but didn't have a plan due to my struggles. When my daughter was approached by someone from the church booth at a neighborhood event, she begged to go to kids' camp that year. She started asking a lot of questions about church and God, so I decided it was probably a good time to start introducing her and reintroducing myself. The love the church has for the kids brings families in. Both kids loved going. I can on honestly say that the church and the members helped me reconnect with my faith. It was also a little peace when we moved to a place with minimal connect connections and family. Thank you for welcoming us. Yeah. Um, this is an anonymous story. It's been such a blessing to see the influence the front has had on the, in the community and the people attending. The Lord has placed his light in Bluffdale, in the Bluffdale area, and he will continue to grow his church. This is Andrew's story. Our family was led in moving to Utah in 2021. We prayed for a church as part of the Lord providing our, for our move. I found the front before actually moving and began to feel confident God provided. Before the Lord provided work and a home, he gave us a community of believers. Yeah. This is Sally's story. Uh, Sally says, I was eating lunch with my pastor we were discussing the upcoming changes at our church, including her transfer. Our friendly waitress asked us if we went to church and which church, uh, and she shared that she was attending the Front Church. I had seen an advertisement on my Facebook feed for the Front Church and recognized the pastor as the dad of one of my students. After my pastor transferred, I attended the Front for the first time and just kept coming back. This is also an anonymous story. I joined the front back in January 2022. It was the second day of a new year and I decided that I needed Jesus in my life. I almost lost one of my oldest and dearest friends and I was in a very dark place in my life. Depression, anxiety, struggling with a lot of personal and family issues and I wanted a change. I remember waking up that morning, making my coffee, and sitting down to search for a non-denominational Christian church. Many options popped up, but nothing really sprung out at me. I wanted something small, more intimate, where I could build relationships, volunteer my time, and be involved. I didn't want to be just another face in the crowd. I closed Google feeling a little bit overwhelmed and logged onto Facebook. As soon as I opened up my Facebook, up pops a video of Pastor Nate talking about The Front, a new church that had just opened up a few months prior. We decided we were going to start at this church first. Then over the next few weeks, go to a few more churches and decide which one we liked the best. That Sunday, as soon as we arrived, we were greeted by Jessica, warm, friendly, and welcoming, as we all know she is. We walked into the auditorium and sat down with and within a minute, Pastor Nate was sitting next to us, talking to us, and getting to know us. We really enjoyed that Sunday morning so much that we decided to go back the following week. After that, we never went to check out any other churches. We decided to stay at the front and make it our home. Going to church was the first step, and that first year, I was still struggling with a lot of those internal demons. Yes, I was going to church, but I wasn't doing anything more than that to get closer to Jesus. That summer, I hit a turning point and decided I really need to turn my life around. Things for me went from really bad to worse. I started to read my Bible every day, do daily devotions, 
I would listen to worship music when I felt sad or stressed or overwhelmed, which then turned into listening to it just because I liked it so much. I also joined one of the community groups. Joining this group meant I had to step outside of my comfort zone and really open up and put myself out there, which I did. I slowly started to see the ways God was working in my life. One particular incident that stands out to me is I was dropping off stuff at a donation center. I was having a really, really tough day, a horrible day. And the man helping me unload my car looked over at me, put his hand on my shoulder, and asked if we could pray together. He called one of the other helpers over to pray with us as well. It brought tears to my eyes, and I will never forget that man. I started to pray, not just once a day, but throughout the day. I thanked God daily for all he does, expressed my gratitude, and if I felt confused or unsure of anything, I would turn to him. Since joining the front, I have also met some of the most incredible and amazing people, people with the kindest hearts, people who have helped me along the way, and I feel so incredibly blessed to not only know them, but also to call them my friends. Jesus truly does amazing things, and the front helped me open my eyes to it all. Yeah. This is an anonymous story. Um, the way we navigate sensitive topics in the church matters. And I never imagined I'd know this so intimately. Have you ever felt like or been told that there are topics too taboo for God and his people? I have. What I've come to recognize over the last two years at the front is that to heal church hurt and unlearn, unlearn misunderstandings of the character of God we have to risk our hearts. For me, this looked like reaching out to a virtual stranger, <clears throat> Jessica Bittman, and coming out as not straight in a dog park two, dog park two years ago today. I'd wrestled em endlessly with the implications of my desires, ultimately landing on the idea that I would be forced to choose between the Jesus story and long-term connection. There's something about the way that we often handle these topics that is excruciating, namely, that we, desire, we who desire connectedness in the family of faith often feel like our straight brothers and sisters would rather us remain closeted. We all have our closets, and sometimes a closet feels like a safe place to be, right? What I've learned over the past two years is that to make God our home, we have to surrender the false safety of our closets and step into the true and authentic friendship with him. I tried to stop there. I did. But once God did a work in me and I was softened to the reality that I may be called to celibacy, I realized that I could not faithfully walk outside of the closet without walking out my faith in community. It wasn't necessarily that I feared my desires would turn to action. I feared that celibacy would mean choosing against belonging, family, and ultimately motherhood. Over my time at the front, through all of you, in ways that many of you don't know, I've experienced the belonging and family I've been hungry for. Some have sat with me in the reality of the now and not yet, believing with me that one day I'll be a mom. Others have stood alongside me when I feel tired, reminding me that I'm not alone. Thank you for being Jesus to me. And I quickly thank Jess Bittman specifically for showing up and diving in. Thank you for always being open for a conversation when I'm feeling angsty and unsure, for sharing your home and your family, and for encouraging me towards Jesus in a dog park two years ago today. That moment could have gone many ways, but God used it to draw me near. Thank you, friend. This is Jessica's story. Uh, they don't. Um, yeah, Jessica's story. Sometimes being part of, of a new church is hard. Uh, for me, it was hard volunteering because I myself was in a pretty, pretty lonely place at the time. And I found myself asking, are people really experiencing Jesus through all this work? But exactly two years ago today, I was invited to go to a dog park with a new friend from the front. To be honest, I, I never even noticed her come to the front on Sundays. She would slip in and slip out very quickly. When I met her in community group, I, I thought 
it was brave to start going to a community group without going on Sunday, but I was naive, thinking there was no way I missed someone on Sunday. Uh, even though I was the one spinning my wheels trying to figure out how to make sure other, others felt welcomed and had community, it was her who found me. That walk through a dog park ended up being one of the most pivotal moments since moving to Utah. It has been through her that I am reminded I am a good friend, just because of who God created me to be. Though I have known God loves me, it's been through her eyes, or her, it's been through her that my eyes have been opened to the depths of God's love for me and those around me. God has shown me too that he can use me just the way I am um, to love someone else just by meeting them where they're at. In the past, I would have never thought it, I would be enough or it would be enough, but her friendship has reminded me that God creates us each uniquely. And most of the time, all we have to do is show up and let God do the rest. Turn it. It's on still, right? This is my story. Um, in spring of 2021, after years of being involved with children's ministry at my home church before coming to college, I was attending InterVarsity Christian Fellowship at the University of Utah. I got a random call from this guy who was claiming to be a pastor at a new church in Bluffdale, wherever that was. Despite my worries, I went to a coffee meeting with Pastor Nate. He said he had started this church and that they were hoping to start a children's ministry on Sunday mornings. In this meeting, I was reminded of my passion to teach children and youth about the love of God. He told me that they were planning on doing a kids' camp, VBS, uh, in the summer, and he was wondering if I'd be interested in helping out in any way. I said I'd be interested, um, but needed time to pray, and he suggested that I come to the front for a few weeks before making my decision. In that meeting, he also brought up the idea of helping with the kids' ministry on Sundays. Um, I did come to church that Sunday, and I loved the way that it was small, just starting, and I could see how much the people there truly loved God. I was immediately excited and felt so loved and so connected, only knowing two people before this. Um, I knew my answer would be yes, <laughs> and now it's crazy to think that this year I helped co-direct the kids' camp with Jamie, and it was so much fun, and it was our biggest one, and it's so crazy to know that we went from, what, 56 to 147, is that what we said? That's crazy! That's crazy! And so, yeah, I found my community, my family, my friends, and support network here at the Front Church. I feel like I've been here for forever. Um, I still remember inviting people to our lunch Sunday. What are you doing September 12th? You should come to the Front Grand Opening. I remember saying that all over and over a lot. Um, well, thank you for each one of you who has just been so influential and impactful in my life. Um, and it's part of you. It's because of you guys that we're here and doing what we do, and it's really cool. I'd not be, I would not be where I am without all of you. So thank you. Okay, now I'm going to read um, sorry, Mary's story. Mary's story. The first time coming to the front church was my first day walking into a church in 15 years. I was nervous and not exactly sure what I was looking for, but I wanted to start sharing the story of God and Jesus into the lives of our young family, and I didn't feel like I had the confidence or faith to do it on my own. I was drawn to come back because of the kindness from the members, the laid-back atmosphere, and the coffee. Pastor Nate's messages were making my Sundays feel spirit like a spiritual reset for the week, which I hadn't felt before. One Sunday, after a few months of attending, I prayed, asking for truth, and I took a nap. When I woke up from the nap, it was a kind of voice in my head that said I needed to volunteer at the front church. I knew I needed to listen, so I mess messaged Pastor Nate and told him my family was available where they needed us. A year and a half later, we're still here and we are still learning and still searching for truth, but always feel welcome and never judged at the front. Pastor Nate has said, there's something about continuing to show up, and I know it's true. Can you guys give it up for all the people sharing their stories?
Oh, man. God, how's this going to work? This is like my prayer during COVID. And I'm just saying, hold my beer. I'll show you how it's going to work. Unless the Lord builds the house, its labor is labor in vain. We are being built in Christ. We are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Matthew 16, 18, Jesus says, I'm going to build my church and the gates of Hades are not going to overcome it. He didn't mean like I'm going to build it and then it's not going to be around for a while and then we're going to figure it out again. He meant like I'm going to build it and it's going to keep going and going and going. Big C, big C. We at the Front Church are part of the Big C Church globally spread out across the world historically that has been uniting around Jesus for 2,000 years. And why, why for us, why start something new? Why do we exist? Because we honestly are about inviting as many people as possible to experience Jesus' story. Not just learn about Jesus' story. It's one thing to like learn about Jesus' story, but to experience Jesus' story. Jesus is welcome. Jesus is grace. Jesus is forgiveness. Jesus is compassion. Jesus is mercy. Our community needs churches where people belong before they believe. Notice I said churches. We're not the only game in town, nor should we be. There's other great churches around. We want to start more churches too. But our community needs churches where people belong before they believe. Where people who aren't yet following Jesus don't feel like outsiders. Where it's okay to not be okay. Where transparency and authenticity are more important than correct answers. Where you can serve in a multiplicity of ways without having to pretend or fake belief. Where community needs churches where people leave and think, man, I wish my neighbors were there for that. We need churches where people experience Jesus' story. Why? Because Jesus is worth everything. Colossians chapter 1. Paul writes this letter to the church in Colossae. He says in verse 19, For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in Jesus. And through Jesus, to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Listen to this. Once y'all were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through his death on the cross to present you holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. He doesn't say once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your behavior, but then you figured it out and made yourself right before God. See, there's nothing you can do to make God love you any more or any less. What he says is, wow, we didn't care about God. While we were doing our own thing, while we were headed in the opposite direction, he says, but now, even though that's where we were, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you, look at this, holy in his sight. What makes us holy? Not us. <laughs> I can't make myself holy. I think you guys know that too. Like. An honest look in here knows if it's up to me to make myself holy, I am toast. But he says, he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through his death on the cross to present you holy in his sight. Jesus makes us holy. And this, this, the ground is level at Jesus' cross. And this is what I, where I want to land the plane this morning. The ground is level at Jesus' cross. 
we didn't, not some of us needed him to make us holy, and some of us didn't because we were already pretty holy. No, we all needed him to make us holy. We all needed him to present us blameless before the Father. We all needed his death on the cross. And if that is true, then that means there's no room for pretending I have it all together, or I have it all figured out, or my life spick and span and clean. If that is true, then that means there's also no room for us and them. There's no room for, well, we're the good guys, but those guys over there are the bad guys. If that is true, then the playing field is leveled at the cross, and we can be honest with Jesus and with one another about all the things. And that's the type of community Jesus desires for us to be about. Not a community where we're trying to shoulder our own burdens, but as the Apostle Paul says in Galatians 6, 2, carry one another's burdens, and this way you fulfill the law of Christ. This isn't a situation where we climb some ladder to get to God, but it's the opposite, where God climbed down the ladder to get to us. This isn't about a vying for position. This isn't about impressing anybody. This is Jesus' death makes us holy. He presents us without blemish. He makes us right with the Father. Our community needs churches that shout that from the mountaintops. May it be true for us, past and into God's future. Let's pray. It's so sweet to be here, Jesus, thinking about your work and our community up to this point, thinking about how you work. You make us holy. You have reconciled us by, Jesus, by, by your death on the cross. You present us holy without blemish. We are free from accusation because of your work. Jesus, some of us need, that, need, need to hear you right now in the quiet of our hearts. In the quiet of our hearts. As we've been striving to fix our relationship with you. We've been striving to get our religious check boxes checked. We've been striving to fix this on our own. And some of us, for the very first time, need to hear it shouted from the mountaintops, shouted, blasted to our ears, I make you holy. You are holy because of what I have done for you. Let that sink. Let that healing balm heal the cracks of our broken hearts. Thank you that you've carried us this far, and thank you you will carry us into your future. We pray that we would point people to you, that we would honor you. We ask this in your name, Jesus.